Hello, this is a presentation of my paper submitted to the conference Current Resource in Hydropower Technologies. And the presented material is based on work related to my master thesis at MTNU. The background of this thesis is that the development in frequency converter technology has enabled the use of full sized converters for variable speed operation of hydropower plants. Variable speed operation of hydropower plants can be advantageous for both the hydraulic and electrical power system. Variable speed operation may improve in operation at off design conditions, yielding better efficiency and increased lifetime of the units. Furthermore, frequency quarter fed hydropower generators may minimize the negative influence on the of the power plant on the electrical system by being able to control the power factor at the grid side. Increasing the flexibility of hydropower plants will be, will be important as more intermittent generation such as wind and solar is introduced in the power system. The modeling of variable speed hydropower plants can be problematic however because the differences between the dynamics of the hydraulic and electrical system uh, where the hydraulic system is characterized by long time constants and need time simulations over a long time period, whereas the frequency converters with high switching frequencies will need to be simulated with short time steps. As a result, the simulations of variable speed hydropower systems might become excessively computational expensive and time consuming, therefore leading to reduced size and complexity of the model systems. However, these systems uh, can be simplified by only considering the most important dynamics of the system in what is called average value models. In these models, the higher order harmonics of the electrical AC signals are neglected, while DC signals are averaged within a converter switching interval. The use of average value models allows the time steps to be increased, which in turn decreases simulation time and enable the simulation of more complex and larger models for system studies. So this work consisted of creating a detailed machine quarter model in Simulink, which acted as a reference for the average value model of the system. The simplified and average model was implemented by a sixth order state space model of the synchronous machine, as well as a parametric average value model of the diode rectifier. As described in more detail in the submit paper, the creation of a diode rectifier average value model can be done by the creation of parametric functions relating input voltage and output DC voltage input current and output DC current, and the angle between the input voltage and current. All these as functions of the loading of the DC link. Through detailed simulations of simulink models, values for alpha, beta, and theta are defined for a wide range of loading conditions. In the plot you can see in this slide, the lower the set value, the higher the load, and the more current is drawn from the synchronous machine. As you can see, for uh, high loads of the DC link, the relations are quite non-linear. So with these parameters, you have three functions determining the behavior of the die rectifier during different loading conditions. The synchronous machine model and the die rectifier model was connected as shown in the figure in this slide. And the proposed average value model was assessed for steady state operation at varying load and for load steps. In this work, the focus was on examining the accuracy of the predicted variables by the rectifier average value model. The assessed variables were the DC link current and voltage, load angle of the machine, and the QD axis voltages. For comparison, another type of average value model and analytical average value model was implemented as well. Obtained results from the steady state simulations, which you can see in the figure or the table on the right, uh, indicates good accuracy for both low and high uh, DC link loads. It is observed that the error of the model increases with higher loads, 
and this might stem from the nonlinear relations at higher loading. The parametric average mo value model is not noticeably more accurate than the analytical model, which you can see in the figure on the left. Uh, except for predicting the DC link voltage during load steps. This is believed to stem from the implementation of the parametric uh, model in Simlink, where a too low uh, dynamic impedance or loading set is calculated in the first time step. The improvement of the accuracy of the parametric model is for this uh, variable is something that could be improved in the successive master thesis. Uh, however, it is only for the initial transient of the load step that the DC link voltage is far off from its uh, real value in the detailed model, as the steady state behavior is close to the detailed model. For other variables, DC link current and QD axis voltage of the machine, the predicted values are very close to the actual values from the detailed model. So to conclude, from the results, it is shown that by modeling the dial rectifier with three algebraic functions implemented by lookup tables in Simulink, both steady state and transient behavior of the machine of a machine converter system can be captured with reasonable accuracy. In my master thesis, the work presented in this paper will be expanded to a more complex system consisting of a synchronous generator interfaced by a full rated back-to-back uh, -back voltage source converter also including uh, representations of the turbine and governor system and the excitation system. The reduced order average value model will be based on a real life laboratory setup at NTNU and if, ti if time allows the accuracy of the full scale average value model will be assessed against this setup during laboratory testing.